Uh, my biggest pet peeve about being in a rap industry. Oh, the state of rap now. And I ain't know. All right, man. Let me, let me explain this to y'all. Everybody don't know this. So back in the slave day, they ain't used to want us to talk or communicate with each other. Like, you feel me? And most people ain't know how to talk or communicate with each other. Like, because we ain't know how to read. You feel me? So we couldn't talk about shit or talk with each other about nothing. You feel me? And then when they wanted to plan escapes and shit, they'll go far out in the woods and they'll beat on drums. And everything they say, they'll make it rhyme. You feel me? So when the, when they mess to catch them, you feel me? They be like, oh, we practicing uh, Christianity. You feel me? We sang in gospel. You feel me? Basically. You feel me? So, but they'll be beating on, 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 they'll be making beats. You feel me? And everything they saying is rhyming, but they trying to, they trying to like, uh, uh, plan an escape or, or, or get a message across to somebody else on another, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like I'm one of them niggas who carrying that, 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 putting messages in my music and shit. I'm not just rhyming for no reason type shit, you feel me? And I feel like 90% of these niggas rhyming for no reason. They just doing it because they see other niggas doing it. And these niggas is not they fucking self. All these niggas. Imitation and clones of other niggas. You feel me? That would make me different, I feel like. No matter where I'm at, I'm going to be a little peasy, you know? I would say my upbringing shaped me on some, on some shit like... Like, I, I, I'm going I'm to uh, observe. I'm going to observe. I watch everything. You know what I'm saying? I read people, read energy and shit. You feel me? And I feel like if I ain't come from where I come from, I would have never learned that trait. And for the people who don't know where I'm from, I'm from Mobile, Alabama, Glass and Helm, no Kool-Aid jam. Fuck your mama. When I was growing up, it was hard, but I ain't noticed it was hard until I got old and I started seeing different shit. I'm like, damn, man, I'm supposed to be going through that shit. You feel me? Because I'm seeing... When I go to California, I'm seeing niggas who still got their mama and their daddy together. Like, I'm going to their house. They got all the toys, bikes, all that shit in the world. You feel me? I'm like, damn. The shit I was going through was not supposed to be like that, but I thought it was normal. I thought the whole world was like that. I didn't even know how big the world was. You feel me? And I feel like, but the hunger that that shit put in the nigga, like, that's the reason why I made it. For real, for real, at the end of the day, being realistic. You feel me? Because, goddamn, I was fucking with this little bitch. And she had a nigga that wanted to give her five pounds to fuck. So get what I did. I took it. Took the five pounds, shot the lay down video, and then I made it. So I feel like that hunger that was in me is the reason why. I'm, I feel like I went through all that shit to yeah, get where I'm at. If I could talk to the young kids, I'd tell nigga, man, keep doing the exact same shit you're doing. Don't change nothing. I tell myself to uh be more patient though, cause I rushed into a lot of shit like signing and shit. I wish I would have waited at least like six more months or some you know, shit like that. Cause I rushed into that shit and I was fucking with motherfuckers who just wanted to get a check off a nigga. Like they wasn't looking, they wasn't, they wasn't thinking like I'm trying to be a big star. Then they just thought I was just trying to get a quick check too. Fuck no, nigga, I'm trying to get a real, real check out this shit. What made me realize I should have waited with the record deal guy. Now I'm seeing these niggas that signed for millions and shit. Straight directly to labels and shit. One million, two million, three point four, all this shit. Man, I signed E40 for twenty thousand dollars. Feel me? So once I realized that, I'm like, oh yeah, niggas ain't right, bro. I'm like, niggas ain't right, man. That shit ain't thorough. And I'm a grown ass man, so I'm saying the fuck I want. Forty your ass wasn't right, nigga. Straight out. I feel like I'm getting better with showing like the real me and shit. Cause that's another thing. When I first got into um, like they used to be ten forty, they used to be telling me like, hey man, uh, come in, come calm down, like whoop whoop. whoop. Uh, like he ain't like I, I felt like when I get in front of the camera, like if you go watch my older interviews, from I was like sitting there like you feel me, and trying to be politically correct and shit out that shit. That ain't me, dog. That, that was older niggas in my head, like man, that hot shit, whoop whoop. But these other niggas is doing the same shit and getting millions of dollars for it and shit. You feel me? Man, you got me out this bitch still robbing all type of shit, and you try to tell me what the fuck to do. My relationship with 40, uh, it's all right. It's cool. I just, man, I just felt like, man, honestly, I just felt like he did what, what, what any nigga who wants some money to do. You know what I'm saying? See a little nigga, he got some talent. He can get a quick bag off on him. I'm finna get a quick bag. I respect it. The creative process behind creating Miss Guide was on some shit like, I was really just digging into my past a lot, a lot more, because I always do that shit, but I was elaborating more on the things I went through 
because I felt like I was being misguided by uh people that I loved growing up. You know what I'm saying? So once I realized that, I just wanted to show all the young niggas that they being misguided too. That type of shit. My favorite song, my album is uh, Need Your Space. And I say that's my favorite song because uh, I went into a different little bag on that one. I surprised a lot of my fans and shit. And like the uh, the feedback I got from it, you feel me? That shit was good. The Gangsta Grills collab with DJ Drama came about like on some shit. Shit, just being around uh, Mean Street, fucking with Seda and shit, fucking with Joe Lake and shit. That's how that shit really came about. I went in the studio when he had recorded the um the the, the voiceovers and shit, but he would call me while he was in the studio, like, bro, like, he is on here calling me. Man, I'm going through the same shit. I know exactly what I'm finna say on here. Ooh, and I ain't even want to hear it until it was all the way done. You know what I'm saying? But drama, he a cool dude. He a cool dude. You know, a lot of, like, the older people in the industry, like, they be, they be trying to stay away from the young niggas. I don't know if they think we hot or what, but they don't be fucking with niggas like that. It's on a certain few niggas in the industry that fuck with me. I'm gonna keep it on it. But I don't be giving a fuck, though. I don't even like humans. Hey, you already know what it is, man. It's big Overkill on VP, and you checking out 247HH.com.